Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Whether you're buying your first snakes or been keeping snakes for a long time, there's different snakes for different people. We're gonna take a look at what we feel are the best options for your level of reptile knowledge. You're watching Snake Bites. I get asked all the time what snake would be perfect for an individual's experience level. So we're gonna take a look at a whole bunch of different options. Let's start with someone that's just getting their first snake, what the best snakes to go with are. I personally think that there's a handful of snakes that are extremely good for beginners. That doesn't mean that you still can't keep them if you're an advanced keeper. Obviously, I've been keeping some of these snakes for the last 20 years. They're still incredible animals, but I wanna start out with corn snakes. I tell you what, if you're just getting into snakes, corn snakes are a great starter snake. Number one, they're extremely placid, as you can see right here. They eat frozen thawed super, super well, and they only get about five foot long, so they're not a really big animal. Again, the husbandry is really simple. You only need to keep them about 80, 82 degrees, with maybe an 85 degree hot spot. Feed them once a week, clean water, it's pretty much a piece of cake. And again, they come in some really cool paint jobs, and probably one of the coolest things is the majority of those paint jobs are under a hundred dollars so it's just the perfect injury level snake if corn snakes aren't your thing and you still want to get a snake there are some other really good options when you don't have a lot of experience another good animal would be a king snake tank for instance this white-sided brooks king snake is just a really beautiful snake now the brooks king get pretty big they're one of the larger king snakes they can max out at about six foot and they're pretty healthy body so they're a great option if you want something that's a little more sizable but you don't want a corn snake but there's other king snakes certainly like cal kings and Mexican black kings that are great examples too. Let me show you a few of those guys while I talk about king snakes. Californians are another type of king snake that are extremely popular in the pet trade because of their ease of care. They only get about four to four and a half foot long, so they're not a really big animal, yet they're a vigorously feeding snake. They'll eat readily on frozen thawed pinkies and as adults frozen thawed mice. They come in a wide variety of patterns and colors, and again, a lot like the corn snakes, they're relatively cheap, most of them being under $70 or $80. Another king snake that has become very popular over the last several years have been the Mexican black kings. It's just that jet glossy black that makes people really like them, and the care is exactly like a California king snake. If you're looking for something that's still a little bit more different than a king snake or a corn snake, these milk snakes are a good option. They're a little bit more advanced, but still within the range of a beginner snake. And they just have these incredibly beautiful colors. They don't get nearly as big as most of the king snakes and corn snakes, usually maxing out at about three foot with most of the milk snakes like this Pueblin milk. This is actually an apricot Pueblin, so it has the orange bandages instead of the yellow bands. But their care is real simple. They eat frozen thawed. They have the exact same requirements as corns and kings. So again, if you wanna get a little bit more exotic, but don't wanna go into the pythons and boas yet, a milk snake might be the perfect choice. What was the largest clutch BHB has ever produced from one female? Is it A, 98 eggs, B, 62 eggs, or C, 76 eggs? Answer with a comment and keep watching to see if you're right. If you're just not a colubrid person and you really want to get into a boa or a python, the only animal that I really suggest is the perfect starter snake is a ball python. I tell you what, you guys know how much I love ball pythons. They're just such amazing animals. And when you get into the starter snakes, believe it or not, the ball pythons are amazing animals. There are a couple little drawbacks. They need to be kept a little bit warmer, usually around 85 degrees with about a 90 to 95 degree hotspot. And a lot of them do eat live. Although you can most of the time switch them over to frozen, they come in tremendous amounts of color phases. Unfortunately, the majority of those phases are pretty expensive. But now there's quite a few animals that are beneath $500. Things like this albino ball python is usually about $350 or $400. So there's a handful of varieties of really exotic ball pythons that you can still get within a pretty decent budget. But again, ball pythons are incredible animals if you don't have a lot of experience with snakes. 
Certainly, just because the animals I just talked about are entry-level animals doesn't make them extremely cool still. Someone like me that's been keeping snakes for 20 plus years still love keeping those animals. But let's say that you've been keeping animals for a little while and you want to go to the next level. A good starting point might be something like a boa constrictor. These guys aren't something I really suggest for a very first beginner just because they get a lot of size to them. A female can get up to eight foot and that's a little bit dicey when you haven't ever kept snakes before. Although, as you can see, they're extremely placid animals, and you don't need a whole lot of experience to get into boa constrictors. Some of the things that are really cool about them, again, is their temperament. It's also extremely easy to feed these animals because typically they eat frozen thawed, and they come in a lot of cool color phases. And fortunately, a lot of those phases have become pretty cheap. So under $500, you can get a whole bunch of cool paint jobs. I want to show you just a handful of those guys right now. These arabesque boas are a color and pattern mutation, and it's a dominant trait. So if you breed an arabesque to a normal, you're going to get about 50% arabesque right off the bat. And some of the mutations that are coming out of them are really incredible. And what makes them cool is that they're only about three to four hundred dollars, so they're certainly within a good price range for someone that wants to get into boas. These leopard boas are one of my favorite mutations. Again, it's a co-dominant mutation. It's just amazing because they're so beautiful with the iridescence that comes out of them. The other thing that's really nice about them is they're a smaller species of boa. So if you want a boa, but you don't want something that gets eight or 10 foot long, you want something that stays maybe five foot, these leopard boas are something you might want to think about. Another one of my favorite mutations are these motley boas. This is a co-dominant mutation and the super form is completely patternless. They're just incredibly awesome animals. And I tell you what, they're not bad. They're only about $400 or $450 as babies. So again, it's a really great option. There are so many cool paint jobs when it comes to boas. If boa constrictors are a little bit large for you, another good option would be these Brazilian rainbow boas. This is an adult female, and you can see she's probably about six foot, but she's not gonna get any thicker than this. So they're not that huge snake that a boa constrictor is, but yet they're still really exotic and super cool. But again, not a beginner snake. They definitely take a little more experience. In particular, hydration is so important. You wanna keep the humidity above 70%, and they have to have fresh water at all times. These are the type of snakes that will literally die when they go with two or three days without water. They're live bearers and will have up to 25 babies, and they're relatively cheap, going for about 100 to 150 bucks a baby. Another really awesome snake that's in that intermediate category would be the blood pythons. And as you can see, the only reason I put it in the slightly more advanced category is sometimes their attitudes can be a little sketchy. This guy would bite me right in the nose if I ended up getting close enough. But don't get me wrong, there are a lot of blood pythons that are super tame. So if you want a snake that's really heavy bodied like a boa constrictor, but typically max out at five or six foot, blood pythons are really cool. And now there's a whole bunch of really cool paint jobs with some of them being relatively affordable. When you've been keeping snakes for a few years or volunteering with a company that does keep a lot of snakes and you're ready to make that final level, it's about the big snakes, the monster snakes, the Burmese pythons, retics, anacondas, and rock pythons. But again, I really suggest you've had at least a few years experience. Now mind you, this is coming from a guy that's very first snake was a Burmese python. I guess it worked out okay for me. Again, these guys are vilified way too often. As you can see with my girl Sunshine, they're really amazing animals. And when you're ready for a big snake and you've done all your research and you have the proper housing, they can make incredible animals but again an albino Burmese is just one of the very cool things reticulated pythons are another one of the big snakes that are truly incredible but they can certainly be a handful as you can see once they start going they got a mind of their own and they're a pretty big snake but I tell you what I absolutely love these guys oh come on girl ah, here's mine get the back as you can see big snakes are awesome animals and something I've worked with for a long time. I can't imagine not keeping them, but they're certainly a two-person job. It's everything in both mine and Josh's power just to handle this animal. And again, that's why it's really an advanced snake. Something that probably you shouldn't deal with unless you have a lot of experience. But again, no matter what your level of experience is, there's a lot of great snakes to choose from. Everything's a competition here at BHB, so we decided to split the three Night Niles that we have into three teams to see who could grow them up the quickest. It'll be me and Nick, 
George and Josh, and Sam and Chewy. This ought to be interesting. Hey, Nick. Yeah, what's up? Did you move your monitor? No, why? The cage is open. Figured you must have moved it. Did you me? No. You really didn't move it? No, I swear to God, I did not move it. Is it in there? I'll check. Dude, he's not in here. Wow, dude, what are you gonna tell Brian? Nothing, I don't want him to even know. You better look for it, man. Man, dude, he is gonna freak out, him and Brian. Brian's gonna be flipping his Let's go, let's do it. Awesome. I can't wait till Brian gets here. Oh, Brian's gonna be pissed. Dude, Nick's so scared. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Nick, what the hell are you doing? Um, uh, the, uh, monitor. What, the monitor what? It got out. It's out? Yeah. When the hell did it get out? I was in like a rush last night. It, it's... I, I was in a rush last night. <laughs> what the f are you guys laughing at? It didn't get out, dude. We hit it out. You're an idiot. <laughs> you! Dude, this is not funny. <laughs> My theory is we gotta get this thing tamed out so they can be nice and they get bigger quicker. And the only logic thing is to take it out and handle it every day and not be mean to it. This. Whoa! Ow! 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 Stop it, stupid. Now. This is how you be nice to him. Give him ooh. Give him a little rah. Ah, this is racial. I ain't against black on black crimes. Oh, uh, please let go. Please let go. I don't think he's gonna tame him out. I think that theory went to shit real quick. Chewie, what are you doing? Special trick. For what? The monitor to make him bigger. What are you injecting in? HGH. Why? Because I want him to be big, strong, and healthy like me, and he'll okay. grow quicker. Okay, no, 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 no. That's not good for the freaking lizard, and why are you guys coming up with all these stupid tricks? It's a monitor. All it does is eat. You feed it, and it'll grow. You don't have to freaking inject it with hormones. What's a hormone? If that cranky ass isn't gonna let me use HGH, I got a trick up my sleeve. Okay, Onyx of the night. I'm going to sing sexy Nile music from the terrain of the Niles. You're so black and sexy. You're gonna come out and eat the mouse. Because it looks so scrumptious. All right guys, you know it's been about a month now since we had these animals. Um, we all started about 60 grams. Let's see who's weighs most. All right, Tashi, let's put our winner in there. Let's All right. What do we got, boys? 96 grams. And Ooh. Oh, winning. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, for a gecko. Right, Pick winning winner. and okay. put him in the loser slot. <laughs> Here comes okay, the real right, winner. It's time for Onyx. Us to be ours. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, get his tail in, Sam. Get his tail. Ooh, what do we got? What do we got? 120. Ooh, yeah, that's what I love. 120. Ours is Woo. doubled in size. Double, baby. See, he winning. Yes, <laughs> we lost 10 grams today, though. Oh, I lost 10 grams. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's why you thought it was going to weigh more. You lost uh, four grams. Here, put that one away. Make my you go, Get the winner out. Get the loser out. Yep. Finally. Holy oh, shoulders. Give me the. Um, oh, it's hissing. Give me the lid. <gasps> There goes the tail, there goes the tail. My god. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it's like. Oh my god, you don't know how to hold a monitor. Here goes Nick. Here goes the loser. Yep. Alright. What do we got? Holy I think the scale's broken. Hey, 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 h
hand dog here. Oh, you don't know what it's like to not have a hand dog. Here it is, the 120 gram winner. All my techniques work, baby. Is it really a surprise that we did best? Yeah, it's when like... I sing to it. Okay. When no, I no, no, HGH no. it. Okay, you didn't use any of the hormones because I told you not to. Your singing, okay, is stupid. It grew because we fed it. Because monitors just need to eat. You don't know what it's like the way it 80 grams. <laughs> it is right. It's better than 80 grams, so we're good. Oh, All 120, right. baby. Man, you guys really killed it on the Zoom Ed and Snake Bites TV Facebook photo contest where we're giving away a reptile baiter. I wish that I could pick more than one, but there's only one winner, and here it is. Make sure to check your inbox because you're about to get a really cool incubator. But if you didn't win, fear not. We're going to have another one this week. All you guys have to do is go on Facebook, like both Zoom Ed and Snake Bites TV, and finish this sentence. I need a Zoom Ed reptibator because... And we're going to pick the most creative and interesting response, and we're going to give you that incubator. Good luck. Okay, this week's show was all about ideal beginner snakes. We want to know what your first snake was. Did you jump in and go with something more advanced like Brian did, or did you work your way up the ladder and start small? We want to know your first snake experiences. Leave a comment below and let us know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And as you can see, there's always an awesome option for a cool reptile, depending on your reptile knowledge and experience. If you guys want to follow all the things that go on here at BHB or in my life, make sure to hit us up on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV and stick around for some of our favorite comments of the week. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites. What was the largest clutch BHB has ever produced from one female? You guessed A, 98 eggs, you're right. If you got it wrong, don't worry, that's a crap ton of eggs.